Now, last week when I was in for Ryan, I think it was on Wednesday actually, I spoke to uh, Jay Bobniak. He's a really impressive young fella and he was recently awarded the Irish Red Cross Young Humanitarian of the Year 2020. He was a Croatian teenager. He came to Ireland a couple of years ago. He ended up, he was looking for work. He ended up sleeping in Phoenix Park in St. Stephen's Green. And uh, he got his life together uh, when he bumped into a fellow called Aubrey McCarthy, who's on the line. And uh, Aubrey is the man behind uh, the Tigling Centre on Pierce Street in Dublin. Good morning, Aubrey. Happy New Year. And the the same to you and many of them. Uh, And and we should say, actually, you were also nominated, weren't you, for the Irish Red Cross Humanitarian of the Year Award? I was. Just gone. And no. Jay, Jay won it, and I, I didn't get it. Yeah, yeah. The, he won the young one, and you were nominated for the more kind of mature gentlemen's, or gentle <laughs> exactly. people's award. Yes. Yes. Uh, but come here to me. So he had great things to say about Tiglin, and we'd loads of comments from people saying it's a fantastic centre uh, and everything goes on there. I mean, he, he didn't have addiction <laughs> problems, but you do work w- with people who have addiction uh, issues, don't you? Yeah, Oliver, we, uh, Tiglin was set up to help people uh, with life controlling problems. Now, that could be, um, you know, addiction, it could be mental health, it could be homelessness, it could be whatever. Yeah. And uh, so what we do is we try to help people progress. Um, just just on a note, I just wanted to say, the Callan's Kicks, that was the best one ever. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Thank really you very much. It. And I met you at a function in Port Marnock, like a charity <laughs> function, and yes. I was trying to impress the, the crowd to, to give money to Tiglin, and you got up and said that the only reason you give money to Aubrey is because <laughs> he looks like Thomas Slapper. So that's a tell you we met before. But regarding that's a bit Tiglin, of a, di- a bit of a digression. Yes, I do remember. <laughs> I do remember that. But uh, look, don't be flattering me now. This is all about. This is your pitch for the charity. In fairness, that's it. because well, it is Tiglin, a fabulous charity. And I, I tell it, it started with the No Books Cafe, didn't it? Started with the No Books Cafe, where we used to pull up on O'Connell Street, a big green bus, yeah. and we used to. It was converted into a restaurant. And what you had is you volunteer. Um, feeding the homeless, giving sleeping bags, and trying to refer them on to addiction rehab, mental health facilities, homeless services, etc. What happened then was, over time, the volunteers became the people that we tried to help. They, they actually sort of graduated did well, and then they started to help others. And yeah. Jay Bobanak was an example of that. I remember when Jay first came on the bus. I remember the night he came on. Yeah. And uh, he, he wouldn't look at you, himself and his brother. And there was, he was just um, really down on his luck. Yeah. And uh, over time, he started to engage. And I got a text after your show from Judge Gillian Hussey. Gillian is the patron of Tiglin. Yes. And she just said, Aubrey, it's unbelievable to see that that's the exact same chap that, yeah. uh, that came those years ago. But I remember... Because uh, he's bursting hearing, with confidence now. Bursting with confidence. Yeah. I, think, I think you couldn't stop him on the interview. He was just yeah. talking about his life. And he, interesting... He had no interest in education at all, wow. and he's done his master's degree, or doing his master's degree, he did his honours degree, and you mm-hmm. just go, this is a guy that's going to conquer the world. And when he came along, he was a guy down on his luck. Yeah. And I remember hearing Oliver, um, Lady Gaga, being interviewed, and she was saying, you can walk into a room with 100 people who don't believe in you, but one that does will make all the difference. And I think that's, that's what Tiglin tries to do. We try to help people... Listen, you've, what are you good at? Are you good at painting? Are you good at gardening? Are you, do you want to pursue education? Let's see if we can add value there. Yeah. So you, you were able to draw out his confidence, really, because he spoke, you know, uh, very affectionately about you and how you approached him and suddenly gave him that level of confidence. I mean, how do you spot it with someone who is, as you say, so down on their luck? We, we've been blessed with volunteers and blessed with staff. Um, even during COVID, we, we're on lockdown in the, in the centres and even the day programmes all on Zoom, etc. But um, in the Lighthouse, we're still serving uh, meals through uh, DCM, which I'm also a chair of, and they own the Lighthouse. And then we run the No Books uh, Cafe in the evening. That's so the, Dublin that's the Dublin Christian Mission, isn't it? That's the Dublin Christian Mission. That's there since 1828. Okay. And uh, so they asked me to get involved a number of years ago. So, so now I'm chair of that. And so the two services work well together. In the last number of months, we've had an increase of 500% of demand. We, we operate wow. a NECAS system, so you can see who's coming in, who's applying for help, who's ringing, who's uh, emailing. And that's just from the Tiglin side. With DCM, 
Um, the, I think we've served a, a, over 75,000 meals since the start of March. So wow. we're still engaging with the people, but what we've done is we've put in a booth downstairs, and it's all perspex, so the person sits on the other side of the booth, and that person then can come along and say, listen, I need help in X, Y, or Z area. Yeah. You know. So, and another new project which we're doing is in NACE, Oliver, and it's, it's, it's basically for people that haven't come from addiction, it's young guys um, who need um, uh, to progress, like Jay Bobanak, and that's been put together by a guy called John Craddock um, from, um, with, with a group called Homeless Care in NACE, and we're really excited about that, that's going to be uh, starting uh, this year, and it's for Jay Bobanak's. 12 J Bobinax to get into education, to get into apprenticeships and hopefully turn their lives around. Give okay. them a second So the, the, the fellas that are kind of drifting out there may be low on confidence and just to get into that education to, to upskill and, and prepare for the reopening, I suppose, of, of the world. Absolutely, absolutely. And to, to, to just see the potential that is there. And if you can see every day um, when I'm up at the lighthouse, I look at the queue. And the queue now, because it used to go down Pier Street, we're now bringing it down Trinity, Trinity Lane, um, because it's, it's, it's embarrassing the people on the street. Oh, I see, um, yes. So, okay, so, so we have it down the quiet street. Down the, the, street, down the okay. quiet lane. People have their integrity and their dignity. So I look at that queue and I say, okay. What can we do for Mary, Bob, Johnny, Paddy? And see, not only a sleeping bag or something to eat, let's see, is there an angle we can add, education-wise, uh, rehabilitation-wise, yeah. uh, etc. I mean, Aubrey, at times you kind of think, are we talking about the 1950s here? I mean, this is a rich country, and you have people, the, the sense of shame uh, around, you know, poverty and, and being down on the look and looking for help. Uh, and yet the fact that you have to put them down, you know, a side street and so on. Do you, how do you keep yourself spirited? How do you keep going uh, uh, knowing you know, these are problems that exist in the world where they shouldn't? Well, you got encouraged from listening to Jay Bobinac the other day. I yeah. could give you, and I'm, this is not an arrogant boast, but I could give you 100 Jay Bobinacs over the last 12 years that have their lives changed. Interesting, I was talking to a guy the other day who I met begging outside Houston Station, okay? And I knew him from years ago. He came to the centre, he got himself sorted, he's now gone and done his degree in UCD, he now has a restaurant, he employs 20 people. So my best spokespeople are people that I cannot use, because yes. you, you'd know them and you don't know anything about their past. I see, yes. Yeah. Well, look, it's an inspiring story, and you're not even here looking for handouts or anything, you're just getting on with it and letting people know the service is available and to encourage well, people know, who might need it. Absolutely, and we've been blessed. People have been brilliant. Our fundraising efforts are down by seventy percent. Okay. But different St. Patrick's and Greystones, the school there, they did. Uh, they sponsored one of our Sundays. The Queely Group in Nace, they gave us food for to keep the cafe going. Uh, Mac Construction, they did. a uh, sent us fifteen grand. All of that money helps. Fundraisers helps. down by seventy percent. But but uh, our website is tiglin.ie. If you buy Perfect. into what tiglin.ie, we're doing, listen, I'm sorry I have to cut you short because we have to go to ad breaks to raise money ourselves here. But Aubrey McCarthy, happy new year to you and best wishes to everyone at Tiglin. See you, Oliver. God bless. Thank you. Bye.